Hello everyone. Wait a few minutes for a few more people to come in. So the painting that I'm working on is called Create Your Own Reality. And, uh, you know, with all the chaos and with, you know, the crazy things that have been happening in our planet, um, I just wanted to remind everyone to stay uh, mentally healthy. Um, I'm doing so by staying creative and uh, even when all things um, seem to be going wrong, um, you can still make the best of it. And uh, yeah, you gotta make the best of things no matter what. Never give up. And uh, the music uh, is the Blood Machines soundtrack from the new Blood Machines series on Shutter, and uh, it's just a really good cyberpunk synthwave soundtrack, really good music, and the show looks promising, I haven't watched the series yet, it's on Shudder, um, I'll get to it eventually, it just looks like really good sci-fi material, a nice blend of uh, tech and adventure, sci-fi, cyberpunk, psychedelia, and so I'm going to come in here and add some particles. Um, again, trying to convey motion. Really going for dynamics. So, in other words, the act of motion. The difference between a state or dynamics is, you know, a state is pretty much like a solid state of frozen stillness and dynamics means motion. So I'm going for motion here. And uh, I'm using these particles to indicate that motion is coming from the left and going to the right and sort of turning a corner like a system of voids or flight migration triangles um, trying to create a little bit of a direction of flow with these particles come in here a few a few brighter ones might help is the effects of motion. Um, the piece is titled Create Your Own Reality and I hope it gives a feeling of freedom, a feeling of creativity, a feeling of just free-form artistry, you know. Um, just having fun with it. And uh, this painting, you know, I've had a lot of fun with it. It's, you know, definitely um, therapeutic uh, to just work on this. It's been therapeutic to jam out on this painting. It's been very fulfilling. And I've been taking my time because I'm kind of going to be sad when I'm done with it. I, I've enjoyed the process for this one. And so, yeah, I'm going to keep at it. One particle at a time, one brush stroke at a time. And I'm gonna bring in some titanium white into my dark violet acrylics. I'm using golden uh, fluid acrylics. The brand is golden. Uh, the color is the dark violet and I'm mixing it with the titanium white. I'm also using a uh, 
script liner 2 brush. Um, my script liner, I'm using a script liner 2 brush to, to pretty much uh, paint these elongated particles. Um, like so. And uh, yeah. Gotta really just keep grinding out these little guys here until it really creates the sense of motion of like this group of particles is turning a corner and it's alive. And I hope to convey a sense of like integrity with this piece. I want every piece to be eye protein, not eye candy. So I want everything to support everything else to uh, enhance it somehow um, and not take away. Come in here with another one here, different tone now. And this particular particle uh, crosses over one of the square panels just to create a sense of um, perspective and uh, chaos physics. Add a few more here. And eventually I'm going to add some triangles as well. And uh, a couple of different uh, triangulated patterns. Hey, what's up, Spiral Cycle? What up, Cody? Oh shit, you're live. Hoping you're having a good weekend. Hey man, hoping you're having an awesome weekend too. I'm gonna come in here with some particles. And I'm gonna also add a little bit of water so I usually just spray it like directly on a flat surface not on the paint but just on its own little area and uh, sometimes I take a little bit of fluid from from that little pool and bring it into the paint I'm using water, but honestly, you sh I should be using a uh, glaze medium or liquid pouring medium or something else. Um, I ran out of the mediums and uh, just going with water. The this water's got like a tiny bit of medium in that bottle. So it's like watered down medium, but uh, well, watered down uh, liquid pouring medium, uh, mostly water though. So I'm coming in here with more violet, bringing in some particles. And I'm hoping again to just create a sense of flow, a directional turn from left to right. And, uh, and they're sort of swimming together or flying together uh, the way that like Boyd's system do, B-O-I-D-S. If you, got, if you Google Boyd's, um, it's a really cool thing. They use code to program shapes that then fly like birds. And it looks hyper-realistic. The motion is unbelievably real. And it's all done with simple code. And uh, the idea is that um, dynamical systems could be um, created with certain codes and equations 
And so it was interesting to see voids and how they mirror bird flight. Now bird flight obviously is totally different from the uh, computer coded flight simulation of voids, right? I mean, birds are alive. Um, and studies say that they uh, use their microtubules to connect. And so they use their microtubules in flight migration. And so they become entangled um, psychologically or their minds become entangled with the cluster of the group. And so it seems like, you know, uh, if you look up quantum entanglement, through the microtubule, it seems like birds are doing that for flight, which is super interesting. So it's like one thing to mimic bird flight on a computer with voids and with coding, and it's another thing to like have real birds fly. But to the human eye, voids, the flight flow looks realistic and so i'm kind of taking inspiration from that for my triangles and for my particles here um again look up boids b-o-i-d-s it's just you know using dynamics uh, to create motion and shapes uh, and they usually fly like birds it's really cool you could do anything nowadays with computers uh, you could simulate uh, newtonian physics you could simulate like you know, you can get like an orbit to start and it'll, you know, you take a couple of geometric solids on a program like Autodesk Maya and you slap a Newtonian field on them and they'll start colliding into each other. And then eventually the collisions and the bouncing forces them to bounce off each other um, in an orbital kind of way. And they never really quite come back to that center. They just start to orbit. And eventually you have a an endless set of orbits with whatever shapes you have there. If you toss a Newtonian field into a scene with a few round objects, or even just a couple of geodesic platonic solids or whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, sometimes the happy accidents of these simulations of just watching some of these objects colliding and moving um, could really inspire for for some of at least for for some of these paintings that i've been working on hey what's up dude just jamming over here hoping to finish this painting soon by the way, the name of this painting is uh, Create Your Own Reality. And it's just, again, a reminder. Well, I'm hoping that it can become a reminder to, um, you know, make the best of things even when they seem chaotic. And so the title Create Your Own Reality um, is supposed to inspire some positivity, I hope in these crazy chaotic times. When I say crazy chaotic times, I mean, you know, police brutality is out of control. Um, COVID-19 is still a thing. The United States, um, the curve is going back up. And uh, it's mostly because people don't care. Like in Florida, they're acting like uh, coronavirus doesn't even exist. And so people are getting together in large gatherings. They're getting sick again. It's terrible. And so when I say chaotic, you know, uh, you know, global warming, uh, like Siberia got like record-breaking um, temperatures and so you know with all the weirdness out there um, sometimes it's hard to realize how blessed we are but we are truly um, still lucky uh, in my opinion and we have a lot of potential we can do a lot um, with one lifetime and um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like no matter um, how chaotic things get, I'm never gonna stop making art. I'm never gonna stop um, trying to make the best of things. And I hope that, um, you know, those of you who are out there, if maybe you're a little bit depressed or feeling anxious, you know, I hope that uh, oh, hopefully these words inspire. And maybe they don't, and that's okay too.
let's see. Cut in to a different area of the painting now. I'm going to crop in on the vanishing point to the right here. And we're going to just add some vanishing details. Really hoping to continue this direction of flow. And so eventually I will switch up and use some teal, some blue green, to contrast some of those violets. Um, and I might even bring in a different color, maybe some pink, but keep it sort of like in that range. So, yeah, keep jamming here. Create some the illusion of perspective a little bit with these particles. Have some that are sort of skewed and floating off. Maybe it collided with one of the objects right before reaching that point. And uh, I'm going to brighten my violet a little bit before switching. I want to have some brighter particles in there that are just a tiny bit uh, more lavender. Maybe lavender isn't the right word. Um, just a brighter violet. Particle to sort of sharpen up the edge of that large pink triangle there just to get it to sort of like Look sharper and cleaner Sometimes I clean up with some of my other details you can Do anything you want there are no rules Okay, I'm gonna wait for that to dry a little and I'm gonna um, Add some more triangles I think we need some pink, um, maybe like another uh, pink triangle, could be kind of neat. So actually, you know, I'm going to come in with some tape and uh, prepare for a larger shape. And I will uh, put it in the foreground here, create the illusion perspective of this, this triangle. Yeah, take care of your mental health during, you know, all of the things that have been happening. Um, you're alive, it's up to you. Uh, you. You can do a lot. Just think about Stephen Hawking and how much he did. And uh, yeah, you know, he, okay, sure, he had some money, but uh, I think he had more intelligence and that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, what had him, what kept him going really um, we can do a lot with even just uh, self quarantine times and so I decided hey why not I'm gonna go on twitch I'm gonna take advantage of these you know self quarantine times and just go live more and just uh, just paint for you all live and, uh, and I hope you guys dig I hope you know hope it's chill I hope you're digging the music. Again, it's the Blood Machines soundtrack. And I have yet to watch it. I have not complete, I have just seen the trailer. It looks really good. Actually, if, if you Google the trailer, um, it's so badass. Spiral Cycle says, can I share a cool quote I read? Yeah, go for it, bro. Curious to see what you got. Don't go through life, grow through life. 
Yeah, I like that. It's kind of like what flowers do and what trees do and what nature does and what we forget to do. I think we do it anyways. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you get into the comfort zone and you don't grow as much and it's always cool to, you know, push yourself out of those comfort zone um, corners and, and, and grow, you know. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool quote, man. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna wait for that uh, white to dry and I'm gonna come over the, over the white with some pink. spraying here and got a little bit of ventilation. Um, I'm going to keep it minimal. It's mostly going to be acrylics, but I have a tiny bit of aerosol in there and uh, it's fine. Okay, that was it. Literally just two sprays. I'm going to add a, uh, I guess, object made of nodes that sort of swims like a snake. It's hard to explain it, but you'll, you'll see it visually and uh, eventually um, actually I could probably just start work on it right after the uh, triangles rise. That would be kind of neat. By the way, for those of you who um, follow me on Patreon, there's a new video where I uh, work on abstract silhouettes as inspiration or a petri dish for happy accidents, for looking for new designs, uh, for art, and for ideas. And uh, yeah, and for those of you who don't follow uh, Patreon, um, you should definitely find, follow my Patreon. I give art away like every month. Uh, I you know teach techniques, um, post art on there nobody ever sees anywhere else. And here are some of the. Um, quick flashes of some of the silhouettes that um, we worked on and these again are up on patreon this one kind of looks like a Gundam there's another one these are on patreon uh, and the tutorial is also there for the highest tier and uh, yeah I just thought it was a cool exercise to, to show and demonstrate um, as a means for visual brainstorm, for discovering new ideas, for happy accidents, and uh, yeah, I worked on a bunch of silhouettes, and who knows, maybe one of them can become a uh, element for a future painting. I'm gonna take some of this tape off. Looks nice and sharp. Not bad. Not bad for dollar store tape. Sometimes you you know, you could spend like seven dollars on tape and it's terrible tape. And, and sometimes you spend a dollar on tape and it's awesome tape. I guess it's uh you know, depends on the brand. Um, I don't even know what brand this tape is. It's a dollar store masking tape. Oh, it's Pro Touch. Pro Touch. By the way, uh, for those of you who um, are interested uh, in watching more live painting in the future, um, I'm going to be working on a different painting um, later in the week on, on Friday or Saturday. Um, I'll post um, something on like my social medias about it. Um, but definitely um, this weekend I'm going to go live again and I'm going to live paint um, and then I'm going to be jamming on a totally different piece. Um, Really hoping to finish this piece soon. But even if I don't, I want to stream a different jam on 
maybe Friday night. It'll probably be from Friday to Saturday. Probably like from midnight and on. Man, this, uh, this soundtrack is so good. Blood Machines. And so, right about here, I'm starting to mess up because I'm having a hard time. The tripod's kind of in the way. I'm gonna cut around it. There we go. Coming along, I mean, it feels like it's flowing in the direction uh, that I need it to. I mean, it, it'll, the triangles are going to definitely help. So once I start dropping in some triangles in there, it's going to make things a lot better. jam out a little bit on the uh, left side of the painting. Try to get a good view there. Maybe angle it upwards a little. Get kind of a good view. Okay. And I want to add some pink uh, triangles on the left side there as well. Create some flow. I started watching a really cool show called Hunters. I don't know if any of you are watching it. Uh, it's about just a bunch of Jewish people killing Nazis, getting revenge for uh, for the Holocaust. It's a really good show. I think it's, I highly recommend it. I think it's really well made. Um, they did a really good job with just casting the right people and just really getting good sets and settings and cinematography. Yeah, awesome show. So yeah, if you're looking for new shows to watch, obviously Blood Machines, cool sci-fi show, and uh, Hunters is a really cool, like Nazi hunting, like almost like quasi superhero-esque kind of movie. in the chat because it's just sounding so good right now. Carpenter Brook. Good stuff. Hey, what's up, Andrew? Hey, congrats on that Zekrom earlier. I got my 16th one. I got 16 Zekroms and still no Hondo. It's crazy. Yeah, I got mostly two star uh, Zekroms and like maybe 
out of the 16, uh, maybe four or three stars. It's, it's fucking hard, bro. I, I need a hundo. That's like a, that's gonna be the best, uh, the best Pokemon for, for Master League. So I, you know, a hundo would be nice. But I have a really good one for Ultra League too. The lower, I think it's like 11 attack and then the maxed out, 15 defense, 15 health. So I'm pretty stoked. At least I have one for Ultra League. Oh, I have not, I have not. I've just been kind of running around and then like raid hour happened and then like had to run around for food. And then I was setting up this live thing. I ran out to get coffee and uh, quick check was like they were serving hot water that looked like piss literally so i had to like wait for them to make it and then finally got here and set up and just started going live but i'm definitely going to download um you know i'm going to i'm going to check out um some of the games they have on there maybe go live with one of them maybe check out that star wars game that you were talking about yeah dude quick check sucks i went in there and they were all confused and they kept telling me like oh yeah we have decaf we have original we have colombian i'm like no you don't it's hot water and then i had to pour it and show them because they didn't believe me <laughs> <laughs> and I was like being super polite too. I was like, I'll come back in like 10 minutes. And I went, I skated around and then I came back and they totally like forgot about me. And I was like, uh, so you didn't even like, you know, start making the coffee. And they were like, oh, uh, and then they told me the same thing again. <laughs> they were like, we have original, we have decaf, we have Colombian. I'm like, no, you don't. And then they finally started uh, making it. And I just poured myself a coffee as it was brewing. And anyways, so that was my whole story from before. <laughs> yeah, their coffee does suck, but I'm, you know, I'm very limited right now. I messed up my, um, what do you call it? French press. I was making myself cold brew um, and I uh, basically forgot about it. We, we, we were away for a weekend, came back and it was all moldy and now I don't wanna, I, I just think it's like, even if I wash it, it's gross. So I just threw it out and started buying coffee again. Uh, I should really probably just switch to Yerba Mate, which which I'll probably do eventually. I'll, I do that like every once in a blue moon, like I just, you know, quit coffee, cold turkey, and start drinking Yerba Mate, and then quit Yerba Mate, cold turkey, go back to coffee. But yeah, yeah, cold brews are so good. Yeah, I know, and that's the thing, coffee just tastes so good. Cold brews are like super delicious. And during the day, like there's more stores open, but right now during COVID, everything closes at night. I went, I went to Quake Check for crappy coffee, uh, and I can't, I can't really complain too much. They, they had Colombian coffee, and it was not bad for Quake Check coffee. Definitely it was hot, though. I wish they had iced coffee. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna come in with some white sprayage. Gonna spray some white paint and uh, and then I'm gonna let that dry and come back with some pink bring some of those hot pinks feeling the synth wave channeling the, the cyberspace neons so yeah. wait for that to dry a little and some pink. It's pretty dope, man. Carpenter Brut is really good. I have to get Shutter. I don't have it yet, but I definitely um, want to watch the series Blood Machines. It's just so promising. I'm gonna post a trailer in the chat. Let me know what you guys think. This this series looks really cool. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Looks promising, right? I mean, just the freaking the lighting is amazing. The color. Thank you. Yeah, no, they well the well yeah no blood machines is super dope. Um, and thank you if you meant like my painting is cool. But yeah, no, but but totally watch that trailer. Blood Machines looks promising. I really want to get Shudder just to watch that series. That's how good I think it might be. I hope the storyline goes as deep 
has the visuals, but the visual effects look promising, very psychedelic, um, you know, very cyberpunk, and I love the lighting. You know, they're using three-point lighting, nice rim lighting behind the characters to give them a strong uh, neon outlines and separating, like, foreground elements from background elements with just good use of three-point, two-point lighting. They're doing really amazing um, cinematography tricks um, in that series, and I just think it's, like, super next level uh, visually, and I'm hoping that the, the story is going to be just as good. Okay, now I'm going to come in with the pink. And, uh, it's the Gleaming Pink F4000. So for those of you who are interested, and I'm using uh, gold uh, NC acrylic, very minimally. I'm mostly painting by hand, but I will occasionally come in there and just do like a quick triangle or something with uh, aerosol. Just love that hot pink, gleaming pink, F4000. Um, again, if I was like spray painting outside, I wouldn't be using this crap, but it works really nicely with my acrylic paints. And so I love this stuff. But of course, graffiti artists are going to say, oh, you know, you should be using, uh, you know, some enamel-based crap or whatever. Nah, you know, I'm not doing a mural right now. I'm just working on a canvas and I need um, for the uh, paint to be smooth uh, and for me to be able to blend acrylics on top of it. So this is definitely, um, you know, my preferred uh, aerosol to go to for that. Come in with some more particles while we wait. Just like a few in here. Really trying to unlock affiliate here. Apparently, you know, I. Um, wasn't taking the algorithm seriously enough and I let my 30 days go by without fully pushing um, the stream of it to unlock like affiliate so I'm working towards that once I unlock affiliate I'll be able to release certain emojis or emobits or whatever they're called on here I'm still learning how to use twitch still learning all this stuff but as we go um, it's gonna get better and I'm really hoping to unlock the affiliate feature, um, which I think is really going to allow for things to kick off here um, once I do so, because uh, I'll be able to uh, just do a lot more, assign people roles, um, you know, get Twitch bits and all that, so yeah, really, really hoping to unlock the affiliate. Dude, yeah, it'll happen sooner or later. And thank you, brother. Thank you for all the support. And by the way, I'm sending you um, more uh, Patreon art at the end of the month. So uh, definitely, you know, check your mailbox in about two weeks. And uh, I'm going to have some surprise art in the mail for sure. Well, I guess it's not a surprise anymore. <laughs> well, it's surprise art. You don't know what it's going to look like. But, uh, yeah, definitely mixing it up. Sometimes it'll be prints, sometimes it'll be like an old original uh, ink sketch or stickers or merch or, yeah. I want to get into some 3D printing soon, too, and print some uh, interdimensional uh, holographic mech droids or galactic defenders or whatever, you know, all kinds of stuff. Platonic solids, too or uh, hybrids between platonic and Archimedean solids, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna definitely print some stuff. It's gonna happen soon. And uh, I'll definitely be uh, sure to uh, send out some of the smaller like printed stuff as gifts to my patrons for sure when it happens.
Hell yeah, my uncle came over and was digging your art. Nice. I have quite a bit of it in my apartment. Dude, you're about to have much more. I mean, if you're gonna continuously uh, be a Patreon, you, you're gonna get art every month, so. And of course, some, some of the art will be uh, digital. Like when I gave away like OBJs or like the Book of Patterns was a PDF. Like all that stuff's downloadable to the group, but when the monthly giveaway is physical, you'll get it in the mail and you know, you can hang it up on the wall and stuff like that. Fuck yeah, dude. Yo, cheers. I am so appreciative of you and of any, everyone who supports. And you've been there for a while, my dude. You've, you know, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you've been following me since MySpace days, correct? You've been around since MySpace days. Yeah, dude. 2006. Much cheers, bro. And yeah, I think you're definitely gonna dig the uh, the next batch of art. But yeah, dude, 14 years. We, we gotta meet, man. I gotta come out to Idaho, or you gotta come out to the East Coast whenever this whole fucking COVID thing ends. We're gonna hang out. It's gonna be a trip. I had a third eye opening group when you had the mo Yes, dude, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, no, of course. You, you were in the Godmind group, and then you, um, we switched over to Facebook, and that was loads of fun. That was quite the experiment as well. I mean, everyone in that group was like, it, you know what it was? It was like the, the 4chan of consciousness expansion before 4chan happened. It was uh, somehow friendly chaotic because people were just posting whatever the hell they wanted. And there were definitely some things that were more taboo than others, but everyone was always having a good time. And um, and it's still active, it's crazy. Sometimes I'll go to, to the group on Facebook and um, people are still posting like, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. I think it's great. I love it that, you know, the Godmind group has become a sort of organism of its own and has a life of its own and, and like I'll check I'll check it like you know every once in a while and, and people are still posting. But yeah back in the day it was more informative and we definitely um, shared um, just a lot more deeper knowledge and the uh, Facebook group became more about memes and just more about uh, freedom of expression, I think, which which I value as well, you know, and, and we had a cool group of people. I mean, it's not like people were on there posting like, you know, uh, tasteless violence or anything like that. Like everything, you know, for the most part, it was just a little out of the box, but yeah. Go back, man. Yeah, I read a lot of stuff during that time. Hell yeah, dude. I mean, those were the days where, like, I was reading, like, books like Prometheus Rising, which which is an awesome book by Robert and Tom Wilson. Um, you know, books like, like the whole The Cosmic Trigger series which was super inspiring, also by Robin and Tom Wilson. Here's part two. Where is part one? I don't even know where part one is here. But, uh, you know, super inspired by, like, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Was reading, was reading that around that time. Um, a lot of different books, man. Inspired by, uh, you know, Consciousness Expansion. Authors and just pretty much like anyone who had a taste for this kind of stuff. You know, the uh, another inspiring one, The Invisible Landscape by uh, Terrence and Dennis McKenna. Yeah, dude. Um, a lot of a lot of great books that uh, again, all of these, and this is a section of my bookshelf. Of all books that I read in the mid-2000s, 
around 2000, maybe from 2003 to 2007 or so. You know, we'll throw some uh, Philip K. Dick in there. Some, some, uh, some fiction as well. And to me, sometimes fiction is nonfiction written in uh, in a way where now he doesn't have to explain himself. You know, a lot of a lot of these ideas for a lot of these sci-fi fictional stories that Philip K. Dick wrote about actually were based off true hallucinations, visions that he had, and at the end he admitted to, you know, having certain experiences. And a lot of people just thought he was crazy. But, you know, who knows, maybe he was onto something. Um, in Ballas, he talks about how the Roman Empire never died and how we were living in a duplicate hologram copy. And uh, this is like, this book alone is only like a small sliver of a larger uh, book called Exegesis, which I think it's like 8,000 pages. It's ridiculous. And it never got published. And this is like the most that ever got published. I think they recently released parts of Exegesis, but this was the first bit taken from that chunk of writings. And so this is another, this is probably my favorite Philip K. Dick book. Uh, the writing style is very confusing, but I love it because I feel like this is where he hides a lot of what he believed, um, but he hides it as, as fiction. But I think there's a lot of nonfiction here. Uh, nonfiction in a sense that, of like things that he experienced and didn't know how, how else to communicate otherwise. And so maybe he hid some of, he, of his hallucinations or visions in these writings. And I think Vallis is one of those. And yeah, great book. You know, another, another great book, um, Entangled by Graham Hancock. To me also, you know, The Eater of Souls is another book where I feel like the writer is uh, hiding. And in this case, he admits to it. He's, he's telling you his ayahuasca experience. Um, and you would never guess it from writing it. But um, basically, he, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a fictional story. Um, you know, it's, if you look in the back, it says fiction. But um, this is based off of visions that he had during a ayahuasca ceremony. And uh, he doesn't have to prove anything, it's fiction. So I think a lot of people write fiction and they throw bits and pieces of, of their own reality into it. And so this is another great one. Alrighty, let's get back some painting. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I love books, man. A good book is, uh, it really, um, I feel like, enhances the imagination as well. You start to um, exercise your third eye, visualize realities and worlds from just words. It's pure magic. And, uh, yeah, I need like, I need some time to read a bunch of good books really fast like I used to. I used to read like four or five books at the same time. Now I take forever on a book, but I, I, get, I gotta have like a reading phase again where I just jam out on a bunch of good stuff. Alrighty, let's take some of this tape off. But actually, that's not true. I've been reading a lot of books recently, but they've been uh, like designer books. Uh, well, I teach NJIT. I teach uh, simulated environments, character development, digital design, and character animation. And so, um, you know, I'm constantly reading tutorial material, books on design, but also um, I've been exploring Dungeons and Dragons material. And that whole franchise is really cool too because they're sort of like prepackaged narratives for interactive storytelling. And um, uh, I have been reading um, these books recently, Eberron, Rising from the Last War, and of course, like the classics, you know, Monster Manual. I mean, this this freaking book is awesome. If you're ever working on a movie or, or you need ideas or a painting or whatever, 
and you need inspiration for monsters, this freaking book is a gold mine. I mean, there's so much cool stuff in here. Like you could literally just get lost learning about all these different types of creatures. And they're all inspired from real archetypes. Like the harpy is Greek, you know? Um, the, the half dragon might be, you know, like maybe either Asian or European, I forget. But yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in, in these books too, man. A lot of creative storytelling, referencing of old myths, um, you know, the karmas of the gods playing out with the interactivity of chance because you have a dice. And so rolling dice um, can really induce randomness. Here's a player's handbook, by the way. And so I've been game testing uh, some concepts with, dun with the Dungeon Dragons toolkit on paper, hoping to one day, uh, with the help of a crew, uh, maybe developing uh, an interactive narrative, maybe like Unreal Engine 5 or Unity, and creating something with VR. But I've been testing a lot of stuff on paper and uh, making maps and just, because what makes Dungeons & Dragons really cool is not only like the character development aspects, the storytelling aspects, but also the dice rolling makes it for uh, chance to really happen. So if you roll a one, you fail. If you roll a 20, you overly succeed. And then all the ranges between, like if you roll a 14 or whatever, uh, really gives you that luck factor. And so let me show you guys something. And so I've also been game testing some stuff and making some maps and uh, yeah, testing some ideas on paper uh, with the Dungeons Dragons toolkit in hopes of one day um, through finding happy accidents, programming some of this stuff as a interactive novel or like a video game or something just on Unreal Engine 4 and I would just be taking my style and making you know like imagine like you're in your bedroom you go to sleep you have an outer body experience and these higher interdimensional beings abduct you and they take you into a higher dimension and they tell you if you pass these trials and you are, uh, and you attain universal worth in the eyes of the gods, you will be chosen to defend the universe. And so you have to go through like mazes, puzzles, all these different trials. And then if you pass them all, you become a defender of the universe and have to defeat this like, you know, army of shadows or whatever, soul leaders. Um, and so my concept storyline would be along, along those lines. You'd be helped by Bodhisattva, uh, fourth dimensional bodhisattva robots for lack of better words and uh, you know the story would be and the style would be like my paintings you know like the guardian bodhisattvas could be a little bit like you know like that and that kind of style the worlds are going to be super hyper dimensional and uh, but the uh the rules will be a hybrid rule set based off Dungeons and Dragons. I've, I've been really digging um, the way everything functions. So, yeah. Just to give you guys a sense of how many maps I've made and like how much um, testing I've been doing. And then I've also been doing some stuff on Discord. I got the uh, Avray bot and I was able to program a bunch of uh, different characters that I can control. Uh, each uh, text channel is a different part of the world, and so I've been testing things on there with code as well, and it's been it's just been very fulfilling. Um, and of course, you know, uh, playing with some miniatures too. Again, I now with COVID, we, we migrated a lot of this game testing to Discord, but when it was safe to hang out. Um, you know, we were using miniatures on these maps. I've been painting miniatures. So here is a beholder. 
Uh, I'm sorry, this is not a beholder. This is, uh, is it a spectator? Yeah, this is a spectator. You know, here's a warlock. Um, and, uh, yeah. You know, some, some extra, like, pieces. You know, like, animals and, like, little crates. And, like, chests. Dude, painting miniatures is so much fun. Like, I don't really... A lot of people don't even know I do that. Um, but, like, for example, you know, like, all of these were hand-painted. I don't know if you could see it. But... Yeah. It's a lot of fun because you know you're, you don't have to do this for anyone. You're doing it for yourself, so there's no pressure. And then you can really get lost in there and just detail the heck out of something. And, uh, it, you know, it's painting. And it, it helps me to get better at painting as well. But it is a little bit different. It's not a flat surface. And so you learn uh, a different sort of approach. Um, I've come a long way with these. I mean, this guy... Here's here's a spectator. He's so small. I mean, let me see if uh, there we go. I mean, this thing is so tiny. Look at that. I mean, compared to you know it, to the to the warlock, it's the size of the warlock's head. Yeah, dude. Um, painting uh, miniatures is loads of fun. Why not? Why not do any everything that we love, right? I mean. Shit, I might build some Gundams on here too, so just to learn a little bit more about robot anatomy so I can paint some more Buddha robots. Um, I mean, I recently decided maybe I could like build one of these guys live, like fresh out of the box, piece by piece and talk a little bit about what I like and what I don't like about the design of some of these and, and, and possibly uh, reappropriating it for hybrid designs of my own. And so I thought maybe one day in the near future, I could build one of these live. It could be a lot of fun. Put the camera overhead and just clip out all the pieces, build them one by one. You know, I'll be using like, you know, stuff like this and, you know, like the exacto or whatever. So, yeah, I should totally do it. Alrighty, get back to some painting here. Take some of this tape off. Yeah, dude, stay inspired. You know, do, do whatever inspires you as long as it's, you're not hurting anyone it's fine and you know do what you like don't do what you don't like you know um i think also like a lot of times if there is an attraction to a certain like hobby then there maybe there's something to it you know and a lot of times something that you learn from a hobby can out branch and teach you something about other things in life as well so yeah so for me building a gundam might help me with painting better uh, light body bodhisattvas in the future. We need some more triangles. I'm gonna add one on the left there. 
me just make sure. Uh, I'm gonna tilt the angle of the next triangle just to give it a sense of like dynamical uh, turbulence in the uh, the flow of motion here, and I think it'll it'll give it a little bit of variation. Now the uh, soundtrack that you're listening to is Master Boot Record Virtual Verse. Really good synth wave. Try to dry this a little bit. Sometimes I get impatient when I create these massive triangles. I just want to peel them right off and jump on the next one. But patience goes a long way. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes haste makes waste. to cut in front of this purple panel. And hoping to enhance the perspective here. And spray it some white. You know, over time you get a lot of can control. You know, in the beginning when I uh, first started using a can or a brush, you know, things would get messy. Um, over time, you, you learn things like can control, and I can just spray a very small area, very lightly, without dripping. And it wasn't something that I always did. It took a little bit of practice to really get some of that can control. But, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I could do, like, minimal taping now and, and get a decent spray uh, sprayed area without drippage. So I'm contemplating whether this year I should just wait for this whole pandemic thing to end and have a an art show, like a physical art show at a gallery, or if I should do a virtual show on the internet. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. And, and who knows, maybe I'll do both. Maybe I'll do a virtual thing and then I'll do like a winter show or a fall or autumn show or an end of summer show. I'm not sure. It's just that, uh, well, you know, uh, COVID's been going up again in the United States, and I want to play it safe. I would hate it to be responsible for people getting sick at my show and, and dying because of COVID. Uh, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want anyone to suffer from coronavirus or anything like that because of my show or anything otherwise. So, yeah. I might go virtual, but that means having to possibly put in a lot of production time into creating something with a program maybe like Unreal Engine or Unity so it's a lot of work but it's, it's feasible um, I know how to do it it's just a lot of work and my machine is really slow I have an older machine I need to buy a new computer it really um, comes down to that as well now prices for computers are higher because of COVID and so I'm going to wait until September when students are going back to school and I'm gonna take advantage of those student prices and just get a computer then. And so when I do, uh, my streams are also gonna get better. And so, yeah, I can't wait.
Okay, we got another pink triangle there, and we are insinuating more perspective. And I'm really hoping that, you know, this piece uh, gets finished um, at least by the end of, of the weekend. I, I really want to finish this piece soon. I think, you know, we got a lot here. It's not done yet, but I'm gonna finish this guy soon, I promise. Viral Cycle says, I like Twitch, so it will be good to see you grow here, hopefully. Great video. Movie. Yeah, definitely, dude. I love Twitch. And I'm not gonna stop uh, streaming. I'm, I just started. Um, this is literally my first month of streaming, so it's only gonna get better from here. Um, as you can see, I'm already using a better camera. Um, I was using the uh, camera on my iPhone 8 before, now I'm using camera on iPhone 11. Breaking my iPhone 8 by accident was a blessing in disguise. So now I have a better image. And uh, I'm just going to upgrade from here, man. I'm going to keep trying, going to keep going. Um, got some more paintings I'm going to jam on live soon. You know, I'm going to jam on this one live maybe and again my patreons uh, my patrons on patreon uh chose uh the uh geometric pieces um that are going on this painting and so if you if you uh join my patreon you can sometimes also choose yeah dude you chose number six there it is it's coming along i mean i literally just started it but it's gonna look uh pretty damn close to the digital uh, file that I modeled. But yeah, that's number six. And then, uh, another one that I liked that was voted by, I believe, Rich Lion uh, was this one. I forget the number. I think it's like number one or number two. But that, that was the second most voted for. The first most voted for was number six. So you definitely chose that, my dude. You helped to make that one come to fruition. So I might, I might go live on this as well. It's not as big as... Um, the three by four footer that I'm working on here create your own reality painting but um, maybe it'll work or maybe um, maybe I should just work on this piece live what do you guys think look at the size of that canvas huh I'm saving that one for later yeah this studio uh, area here is filled with uh, canvas but um, we're gonna keep it with this one for this stream. And uh, this piece here is three by four feet. But the piece on the wall um, is, I believe, uh, like 10, uh, la, la, la. I think it's like six by 10 feet or I'm sorry 10 by 6 yeah it should be it should be a nice mural sized piece and I think I'm gonna go live with that one soon I just want to get like some of these streams out of the way and just really like learn the flow of streaming first before jumping onto something bigger like that canvas that you saw on the wall there but yeah that's coming it's gonna happen soon and it should be fun Tape. Bring in some more triangles.
that one leaked a tiny bit, but it's not so bad. And sometimes those little bits of drip and leakage actually add to the texture and overall effects. So um, sometimes I don't even mind. Yeah, Master Boot Record is dope. Virtua Verse. I'm gonna drop that uh, soundtrack in the chat as well. Hope you all dig. Just playing a lot of synthwave today. I think every time you streamed, I've kind of played like something different. I think the first time I played some side trance. Second stream we did here, live painting. I was playing some chiptune music. It was a lot more video gamey, and now really feeling that cyberpunk so really gonna play some uh some synthwave right now master boot record really dope shit um virtual verse yeah I think I need more paint on the brush there. So yeah, this painting is slowly coming along. I'm also going to experiment with going live different times. And I'm thinking maybe um, one of these days I should just go live during the day. It's a little bit noisier in the house. Um, and even the studio, it's just things get a little uh, noisy and hectic during the day. But I could always try, see how it, work, how it goes. Uh, it could work or it might not work. But let's see. But I definitely want to play with possibly going live and streaming during daytime as well. Might get some glare from the windows. Um, but we'll, we'll try to work around that. feeling the F4000 today. Really feeling the gleaming pink. Spiral Cycle says, have you thought about doing your own overlay or notifications on Twitch digitally? Uh, how so? What do you mean? I mean, I have, uh, like, this bot on Discord called Pink Cord, and it tells people on my server that I'm, like, I go live on Twitch. But I don't think that's what you mean. for notifications and then again I'm still learning about all this stuff but um but it sounds interesting sounds helpful I finally just got a mod the other day so that was cool Worlds Warshall is my mod uh thank you Worlds Warshall if you're out there and you're listening thank you for being my mod <laughs> And uh, some people have overlays or visuals that show transitions and stuff count or whatever you want. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to do that. You know, it might only unlock after 
I like get the affiliate feature. So hopefully, hopefully I land that soon. I'm literally one goal away. Um, I need three people to interact with one another throughout like uh, the consecutive time percentage or whatever the algorithm wants. I forget, but um, that's like the hardest one to get. I'm close, but oh, you can do that anytime. I got to figure out how to do that then. I have to just figure out how to um, plug in the information and then, yeah, and then whenever like a new subscriber happens or like, um, you know, whatever it is, it'll show up at the bottom or wherever I put it. Yeah, no, I'll do it. I, I just thought I had to earn it through some award. Again, I'm still learning Twitch, man. I'm like slowly, I feel like the avatar picture the lady from Murder, She Wrote. I'm like the old granny with the VR headset, you know? Like, I'm getting old, man. <laughs> but fuck that. I'll keep learning. I'll keep doing things. And honestly, um, that'll happen soon, too, man. That That's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to definitely add, like, you know, info bar. And, like, I, I would like to have some more graphics going. Again, I, um, I know how to do that with OBS. But my computer's so slow, and I'm just running this through my phone now. But there's got to be a way to do it in Twitch through the phone as well. Like if I go live from the phone, um, I can just pop, you know, those graphics up. I gotta figure out how to do it. But yeah, it'll happen. That's awesome, dude. No, that's so you have some experience with that. That's cool. Yeah. Probably by like the next one, maybe I'll have something like that up. Oh wow, this track is uh, grimy. It just remind me of like Sega Genesis, Road Rash. <laughs> How many of you out there played a game called Road Rash back in the day? The music in that game reminds me of this track. This track reminds me of this that game yeah road rash was sick yes somebody out there played road rash a long time ago remember that game and you know what in times when police brutality keeps happening that game has new meaning because you could drive up to a cop and smack him right in the head with a club and drive away you might crash into a cow getting chased by a cop or two but it was a lot of fun to just drive like really fast and then just whack that cop's helmet off as you're driving by and now it just with today's uh, police brutality and all the violence, that game just becomes more pleasurable. <laughs> Anyways, this this tr this music reminds me of the soundtrack for that game, the original Road Rash or Sega. A good, good game for its time, but I bet you if we played it now, we would be like, this game is terrible. <laughs> but it, it was awesome. It was awesome. But yeah, dude, all this um, is gonna upgrade slowly. Um, you know, I definitely wanna get a green screen as well and a secondary camera that shows my face and um, like maybe like extra cameras to do different things. Like if I, you know, do visuals, like I maybe could have like one, one source that shows the visuals, you know, and then another source that shows my face and then another source that points at the, you know, camera. And I could be like VJing, painting, you know, hopefully talking about something cool, like something deep, multitasking, and uh, yeah. It's gonna take some time, but once I get into the right flow, which, which is kind of what I'm trying to do now and get more gear, things will get better. to take a quick bathroom break. I'll be back in five.
Alrighty, I'm back. Needed a bathroom break. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna bring in some teal. going to help make that purple pop. I don't want to overdo it, but I think a few hints of green are going to really enhance the quality of this image. I'm really going for an interdimensional vibe here um, where maybe um, like if consciousness was totally free from fresh from uh, flesh and bones and was free to explore uh, neighboring dimensions possibly quantum surfing through the fourth dimension the fifth dimension or maybe just a neighboring parallel 3d dimension um, but I'm kind of going for those kinds of vibes of being a sort of like displaced consciousness, not really having an ego, not really having a body, not really having um, form, but flowing through self-transforming possibilities um, endlessly. So really trying to convey a feeling of hyperdimensional infinity, which is really hard to do, because, you know, you can count all these brush strokes. At the end of the day, this is not a, you know, true depiction of infinity. And maybe it is, maybe it is a finite object, right? The whole painting, the canvas itself is a, is a finite object. But if you were to zoom in to the center forever, um, you know, you'll zoom in, you'll see the textures and you'll see the molecules, you'll see the atoms, you'll see, you know, the quarks, all the stuff. So you could, I guess, in theory, um, we, we do have an infinite uh, sort of amount of detail here because you could zoom into one point forever. <laughs> in theory. And many would argue that maybe there's an end somewhere. The Planck scale. Or maybe that's just as far as we've seen uh, things and, and maybe it goes beyond that forever. Who knows? What is the Planck scale? It's just a flag that, uh, you know, a, a physicist, a quantum physicist plants um, on, an, on an area of uh, quantum detectability, but it's not... Um, it might go deeper than that. Something cool someone wrote 
is the farthest thing behind us is the space right in front of us. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, dude, I like that. I think our consciousness, um, like, is larger than the universe. Like, I have the feel, like, I can't prove that, and, you know, I'm not gonna preach it, I'm not, like, purposely trying to believe it, but I, I do get this intuitive sensation that the entire universe was born from consciousness. Now, maybe consciousness is maybe a fundamental property of the universe, much like um, space, time, energy, um, and so maybe, right? Like, you know, we can't prove these things, but again, in deep meditations and in certain uh, states of consciousness, like when I was doing the flotation tank sessions in Serene Dreams with the isolation tank, uh, deprivation uh, tank exercises and things like that, you really start to feel like, whoa, like your consciousness is uh, bigger than what it seems and uh, and that maybe the, the universe is born from some formless all mind or something like that who knows but yeah One more triangle here. And it's going to appear as if it's creeping behind the geodesic solid that's floating there in black and gray. White and gray, really. Do a quick spray here. Pink. Spiral Cycle says, I think consciousness exploration will be awesome outside of what we can do in form. Oh, totally. And I think we do it every night when we sleep and we just forget. I think our brain uh, chemicals are uh, act like chemical doorways where we become entangled with the universe outside of our brains. Uh, we become entangled with the neighboring dimensions outside of our physical form through quantum teleportation. And I think that through the microtubules, you know, you have doctors studying this stuff. You have people like Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose and, um, and a bunch of people out there um, doing studies on the microtubules and how they're made from protein and they act as sorts of like uh, transducers. Uh, they squash and they stretch, they squash and they stretch. And they, uh, there's like a, uh, if I'm saying it right, there's an, an electron, cloud, like a warm uh, resonance that they measured, and they were able to uh, detect uh, quantum entanglement uh, happening through the microtubules. And remember, every cell has hundreds of thousands of microtubules. So the neurons, which are brain cells, also have hundreds of thousands of microtubules, and they're like the transceivers of each cell. And so it makes sense why a creature, a single-celled organism like a paramecium, which has no eyes, it doesn't have a brain, it's a single cell, somehow it can move through mazes and learn things, it can find a mate, um, makes choices where it, you, would, you would think it's self-conscious and has a will of its own based on scientific experimentation. And so paramecium, a single-celled organism, no brain, no eyes, does all this shit that makes you think, oh, is it self-conscious, right? And maybe it's just plugged into the universe because it has hundreds of thousands of microtubules, which are, you know, protein-based uh, quantum uh, connectors that maybe bridge uh, the universe 
into an incarnation through multiple strobes of consciousness. Like I'm here now, 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 I'm here now. And you know, at like, I don't know, maybe a thousand frames per second. And 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 those pulses maybe are coming from zero D, maybe they're coming from their some higher dimension or lower dimension or whatever it is, or zero dimension, the source. And I feel like um, you know, recent studies suggest that you know, the microtubules are, are sort of receiving the soul, if you will, and placing it in the body. Uh, you know, maybe, what was it? Uh, 10 to the 27 times per second, right? So it's like 10 with 27 zeros. And the idea was they were doing studies. If you take psychedelics, that number goes up to like 10 to the 30 for 31 times or something like that. And that what psychedelics do is to increase the, um, the, I guess, pulses of I amness entering the body from the universe at large. I am here now, I am here now, I am here now. And that's why maybe time slows down on psychedelics. And, you know, you read all these depictions of people, you know, being like time slowing down. And anyways, just thoughts, food for thought. But, that, but you know, there are studies out there. Um, Stuart Hamroff has been doing brain experiments for 40 years. He, you know, he got nominated, uh, for a Nobel Prize with Roger Penrose on their theory, um, o, o -Arc, I think O-R-C-H uh, theory on consciousness. Uh, you guys should definitely pull that up. And so they definitely discovered a protein-based receptor type um, structure in, all, in, in, this, in, in cells. Uh, and, and you know, in, in the human brain, they've been studying human brains, uh, doing experiments with microtubules. And so what we thought maybe was the third eye, maybe it's just, uh, you know, uh, the microtubules. And the seats of the soul is, is distributed throughout the entire body, hundreds of thousands per cell. Maybe, you know. I have some experiences that were more real than waking reality, sometimes while dreaming, or maybe having some sort of mixed OBE. Yeah, dude, um, sometimes when I'm really tired too and I have and I'm falling asleep and I wake up really fast and I'm falling asleep and I wake up really fast, you know, and, and I'll be totally sober. And um, sometimes if I get like two hours of sleep and I'm sleep deprived and I start to fall asleep and I wake up really fast, I feel like I bring uh, holographic visuals from the dream realm uh, into the physical plane and uh, you, 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 you could catch certain, you know, almost Blu-ray, real crispy uh, graphics from some neighboring uh, alien dimension sometimes, uh, for lack of better words. Uh, and again, you know, uh, I think Dali used to sit in a chair with a metal ball and do an exercise where he would pass out and the metal ball would drop and he would wake up and he would try to catch elements in the dream world to paint in his surreal, uh, his surreal paintings that he was working on. So, um, yeah, um, I think there is a term for that kind of a dream experience. I think it's called hypnagogic or hypnagogic. I think the right pronunciation for it is hypnagogic. And so that's when you are half asleep, half awake, and you, you wake up really fast, and you, you tap into like really strange elements from deeper parts of your consciousness, or, uh, you know, a far away interdimensional uh, alien planet that you got entangled with. And so the information maybe isn't fake, and maybe it's not a hallucination. Maybe you're tapping into, you know, a far away frequency, or maybe not so far. Or maybe having some sort of mixed OBE. Yeah, dude, totally. And again, the possibilities are endless. Out-of-body experiences make sense too, especially when you look at the microtubules. Yeah, look up Stuart Hameroff. Here, I'll post something in the uh, chat.
Yeah, Stuart Hameroff and uh, Roger Penrose. And honestly, dude, that one video is only five minutes. But if you look at all the other videos in the suggested playlists, for, like that, that basically suggests Stuart Hameroff. I would say watch like the like all the hour long ones. I know I know it sounds ridiculous, but they're all really good. And so I would watch all the Stuart Hameroff videos on YouTube that you can, especially the ones where he explains like the whole. Uh, well, you know, he's the world's first bio, uh, what, what, quantum biologist. He's the world's first quantum biologist, so yeah. Yeah, dude, there's a lot of material on the microtubules. And then Roger Penrose ties some of the quantum physics stuff, because the brain is doing some physics, right? And so, you, you know, Roger uh, Penrose is an award-winning mathematician, he's a teacher, uh, he's, he's one of the greats. He contributed to a lot of um, the building blocks of just physics as we know it today. He also knows a lot of geometry. And so uh, the two paired up. And uh, here, I'm going to post the um, link to the ORCH theory that they came up with. Now, this is a theory, of course, but um, based off of discoveries made from experiments done with microtubules and such. And, uh, and yeah, who knows? You know, anything is possible. Of course, uh, the, you know, we need to um, study consciousness more. Um, and um, we don't fully understand where it is sourced yet. Um, we understand neural synapses happen, and we know that each uh, neuron has hundreds of thousands of microtubules. And now with the new work that Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff have done, uh, we have deeper insight that aligns us a little bit with Buddhism, but still doesn't prove a lot. And we're still left with the, with the giant mystery of, you know, where does consciousness truly originate from? And, and is it a real thing or an illusion and blah, 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 blah. I mean, you can get stuck in, you know, the philosophy of trying to, of just trying to figure out, um, you know, going beyond just the intuition and just stepping into the realm of abstraction and things could get really deep. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like um, what Hammer, what, what, I'm sorry, what Stuart Hammeroff and Roger Penrose um, have put together, the work they have done, um, it's, uh, you know, more than half of their lifetime's work. And once they uh, kind of discovered certain things, um, other facilities, other colleges, other schools, other scientists um, added to their work. And so, for example, they're talking about birds having microtubules and using microtubules in telepathy for bird flight, which ties back to the boys and the bird flight inspiration for my triangles floating that I was talking about earlier. But yeah, um, definitely look up all of the uh, Stuart Hamroth stuff. Really good. So Spiral Cycle says, what's crazy to me is how we are such a small, small fraction of reality, like beyond subatomic, in scale, we can experience and project realities of our own. Yeah, dude, like, you know, obviously if we were to zoom into the moon, you know, it, w it wouldn't be as, as amazing as Earth, at least in my opinion, because I'm a human and I'm biased. We are terrestrial. Uh, and who knows, maybe there's some invisible species living on the moon. But, uh, but yeah, um, we are such a tiny dot, a blue dot on the universe, right? And, and then each one of us walking around uh, with our own thoughts, with their own projections of reality, uh, interacting with one another. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I think ultimately if, if you come from, you know, if you center yourself from the heart and, you know, uh, you have unconditional um, just empathy for other humans, um, it's, it's just, it's not as crazy. And I think it becomes insane when people feel divided and they act upon fear and, you know, and then you have division and whatnot. Um, of course, you know, you gotta balance everything. But uh, yeah, I think we, we are the aliens. <laughs> wet the canvas a little 
and then I hope that when it dries a little, it sort of tightens up. And uh, I'm also going to paint over that. Very subtle glaze. It's like ten percent visible. I don't want to put too much pink. Last time it got like too weird. Okay. That created some atmosphere. Okay. Yeah, dude. Master Boot Record. Just keeps like rocking out with different tracks. Right now it's Interrupt Request by Master Boot Record. Good jam indeed. I, you know, I might just jump to that bigger canvas for the next dream. Um, you know, I might just wrap this one up privately because I'm a bit of a slow poke at painting when I'm doing it live. Um, so I may just kind of wrap it up um, like when I'm not live and then just jam out on like this guy right here stretch it better, prime it, and maybe like prime it black, and uh, start dropping some incandescent colors on it and just jam out. Probably just prime it black first, let it dry, and then just go go crazy, go crazy on it live. Throw some details in white, glaze it. Yeah, dude. 
I might log off in like 10 minutes, but uh, I'm gonna prep that larger canvas and uh, probably jam on that um, next time I go live. Should be fun. For sure, my dude. Always a pleasure. Thank you for coming, dude. Fuck yeah, that's my dude Spiral Cycle right there. Shout outs to Spiral Cycle. And yeah, dude. Peace out, Cody. Enjoy your night, brother. Honestly, um, gonna dry up the triangle here, take a break, work on this again tomorrow. Getting late, did a little bit of streaming today. What did we do, like almost two hours? It's not too bad. I know some people stream for like six hours, but, um, you know, I'll uh, get more into the flow of it. We'll do longer streams soon. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you come back for more. And again, next up, I gotta prime it, stretch it. I gotta jam on that. Alrighty. Take care, everyone.